he must increase and I must decrease. What is the number one job, job of the church? To do that. He's holding the book of Isaiah. A voice cries out in the wilderness. At his feet, there's a lamb. And it's not a scared lamb. It's a very focused, comfortable in his own skin lamb. Leaning against the lamb's shoulder is the cross. And there's a chalice at his feet. And from the lamb's chest, blood is pouring into the chalice. This painting is the gospel, according to St. John, from the eyes of Grunewald, a Christian in Germany years ago. And we hold a cup up every Sunday. And we have come to groan to love the cup. But the essence of the cup is a costly cup. And if it is the same cup referenced in Revelation 14 and Revelation 16, it wasn't filled with good things at first. This picture is a picture that needs to be able to be grasped, not necessarily understood, because it's hard to understand what God did in the true academic sense. But to let this soak in, so that when the resurrection comes, when the power of Christ comes, the full exaltation he has, the glory he has, will be based upon what he did first, his work. And as a, a, a faith-based people, we, we've recently discussed the topic of Sabbath, for instance, where we find our peace. Our faith tells us that in Jesus Christ's work alone will you find the sufficient work for your soul to find rest. That's his work. Jesus is the fulfillment of the call for us to be a resting people Sabbath-wise, a forgiven people, a justified people before the Father, and it has to be done on, now I've always said, you know, we are not saved by works, but we kind of are. His work. Having faith that his work was sufficient, having faith that his work, not our circumstances, will produce peace in us. If you're having a problem with peace, Consider, consider whether or not you're giving Christ and his accomplishment, his it is finished, authority over you. Let's pray. Almighty Father in heaven, you could have you could have stayed the hands of the soldiers. You could have silenced and shamed the crowds who yelled, crucify your son. You could have sent down legions of angels to come and completely disarm this world. But would that have been love? According to our faith and the experience of the gospel and the, the scriptures, not only did Jesus drink the cup that was destined for this world of rebellions, rebelliousness, you chose, Father, as he drank, to walk from your son, who you knew and were in intimate life with before you even thought about making us, so that you could get us back. He drank and you walked for a moment. He experienced the forsakenness, the turning, the, the pain, the, the, the only other being beside the Holy Spirit who has been in full communion with you from the beginning, Father. He experienced the deep distress that comes when that is gone. For Jesus Christ, your son, knew he could accomplish anything as long as you 
were by his side. And through the cross, Father, you have accomplished what was destined for this world, the turning of your back toward humanity. And in one swift moment, atoning for the sins of those who choose to accept what you've done, to acknowledge our debt before you, see our chains, you break them before us, before our eyes, through the power of Jesus Christ and his work. May we pause and remember that the greatest, most defining action and event in our lives occurred before we were even born. It occurred on a cross when Jesus drank it, every last drop. May the Holy Spirit allow us to soak in the sufficiency. May the Holy Spirit allow us to receive Jesus Christ imputing his righteousness onto us and taking our sins onto himself so that the Father, you, can declare us righteous even though we are still sinners. May we let that soak in by the power of the Holy Spirit and travel from our heads and our ears into our hearts. May we believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.